let's do a trickier example of the comparison test. And we're going to do this in two ways. We're going to do it with a straight comparison test, and then uh, later, in a couple of videos, we're going to do it with a limit comparison test, and we'll see how that's slicker. But I want to show you how you can, with a little bit of algebra, do this with uh, the regular comparison test. Um, so here we've got a sum of, it's again a rational function with a quadratic denominator, and so roughly the terms are looking like 1 over k squared. That converges, so our strong suspicion would be this converges. Here's the trouble though. Um, if I just want to assert that this term, this would be a sub k, is less than 1 over k squared, that's actually a problem because if I look at the first few terms, let's say k, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and compare the just the denominators to k squared, I'd like to see uh, bigger numbers here than the k squareds, and that doesn't work. These numbers are smaller. Yeah, you might just say, well, and this is the first thing you should say, you should think, well, maybe I can just use that whole bigger than capital N bit, where there's a few exceptions and it's okay. Uh, trouble, if I go out to like 20, this is up to 400. This is never going to be, these terms are never going to be bigger because that step minus 6k, that grows as a negative, um, uh, as the thing you take out of the k squared is growing. And so this is never, ever, ever going to be bigger than k squared. Well, here's what we can do. Uh, we can say, you know what, anytime I have a reference sequence um, whose sum, so that the corresponding summation converges, right, this is really what I meant, well, you know what, that times 2, or times 10, or times 100, that also converges, so let's just, let's try the 2, that also converges, any constant multiple never affects convergence, so what I can do is I can compare it to 2 over k squared, ooh, Mm -hmm. Is that going to work? Well, let's see. So, um, in other words, I'm comparing the denominators. Let's see, this is, I find it easier to think about the denominators. That's 1 over the quantity k squared over 2. So let's look at these guys. Okay, that's 1 half, 4 halves is 2, 9 halves, about 4 and a half, 16 halves is 8, 25 halves, about 12, 12.5. 12 okay, the first few terms still don't work, but that is okay as long as eventually it works. Ah, now at 20, 290, ah, this is finally compar comparing favorably, okay? And eventually, because the k-squared dominates, this should be pretty close, at least proportionally, to k-squared, and it should be bigger than k-squared over 2, and so this fraction should be less than 2 over k-squared. Let's see if we can actually show that. So this kind of reasoning where you're looking at inequalities, you're allowing a finite number of exceptions, and you only and you can always put in a constant fudge factor is pretty darn unfamiliar uh, for based on our usual curriculum for most students, and that's what makes this hard. So let's just let's see. Let me give you a little a few tricks in this case how we could do that. We are not trying to show that this is bigger than k squared. We'd like to show that this is bigger or equal to the k squared over two. Um, sometimes it's easier to just look at one quantity. And what I, in other words, what I'm trying to show is that this is this greater than or equal to, and put a question mark because I don't know it yet, zero. Okay, so I just want to really want to analyze this quadratic a little more carefully. Okay, I've got techniques for that. In particular, figuring out whether quadratics open upward and give positive values or open downward. Uh, let's see if I can do that. And give negative values. Good way to do that is to think about completing the square. Um, so let's. Um, Let's take out a common factor of one half everywhere because that's going to make make it easier. And then I'm I'm really getting two k squared minus twelve k plus twenty and then minus k squared. So I'm just going to ma manipulate this and see if I can get it in a good form. Okay, that's going to and the key is that the two k squared minus k squared is still a positive k squared. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Alrighty, so it's a constant factor times this guy. That eventually is going to be positive. And let's just complete the square just to make sure we know where it's positive. Completing the square is a great idea. So you take half of this number. So that's k minus 6 quantity squared. The way I do it is ignore the 20 for a second. I'm just trying to match this. 
this would give us the k squared. It would give us the minus 12k. It would give us a plus 36 we don't want, so just kill it off right away. And then it recognized the 20 really is still there. Okay, so this is 1 half of uh, k minus 6 squared minus 18. And then if I distribute, I think I can have a little bit room. Yes, we can still see that. I'll just distribute that 1 half. So we're talking about a quantity that's like this. When I look at the difference between these two things, and this tells us two very important things. One, the main thing is that eventually k minus 6 squared is going to be much bigger, or one half of that even, is going to be much bigger than 9. This is going to be greater than or equal 0 eventually. And just to pin it down, I will actually figure out when. And then we can just say, okay, if this is greater than or equal to 0, then that's greater than or equal to 0. Now, this would be backwards logic if I didn't carefully say, hey, I'm, I'm looking at the implications going upwards here. This is greater than or equal to 0. That means this is greater than or equal to 0. That means this is greater than or equal to 0. That means this is greater than or equal to 0. That means this is greater than or equal to 0. That means this is greater than or equal to 0. And that means that what I wanted to show was bigger than k squared over 2 really is. OK, so let's just see. Let's just verify that this really actually has some breakpoint where eventually this is going to be greater than or equal to 0. Well, let's just figure out where it equals 0. I think I set it up so that there might even be, um, well, it's not exact. Let's see. Um, I'm going to have to erase this, though. OK. Where would that equal 0? It'd be where k minus 6 squared equals 18. OK, so that's not quite. Um, so we really want it to just be greater than or equal to 18. Or k minus 6 is greater than or equal to, well, to make this, you, if you, as long as it's 5, we're going to have k greater than or equal to 11. OK, so as long as k is greater than or equal to 11, this quantity is going to be greater than or equal to 0. All those other things are going to be greater than or equal to 0. And so we can summarize it by saying, let big N equal 11. Then for all k greater than or equal to big N, we have that k squared minus 6k plus 10 is bigger than or equal to 1 half k squared. So the fractions are doing what we want. That's less than or equal to 2 over k squared. Aha. And that's what we want. OK. Eventually, that's what this part says, eventually, after a finite number of exceptions, which really don't matter, the terms of our sequence, that would be like the a sub k's, are less than or equal to the b sub k's. And it is known that the sum of 2 over k squared converges. So I'll just put an arrow. That also converges. OK, that's a fair amount of work. That took some, to really pin it down, that took some algebra. And again, algebra with inequalities and kind of uh, the permission to fudge in certain systematic ways that's kind of unfamiliar. And we'd like to have a better way to do that that really focuses on the idea that, look, these guys, even if they sort of take down this the denominator a little bit, when k is really big, when k is a million, the minus 6k really shouldn't matter too much. And basically, it's like 1 over k squared. And that should make it converge. And that's going to be the motivation for introducing the limit comparison test. But if you're in, if it's insisted that you use the straight comparison test on something like this, you do have to go to something like this work to really verify that even though these numbers are smaller than the simplest comparison, they uh, can be compared favorably to a little more clever comparison.